Here's a relatively short talk on how one makes a diagnosis of chronic colitis. And at least in this country, when you make a diagnosis of chronic colitis, it's inflammatory bowel disease, inflammatory bowel disease, inflammatory bowel disease. That said, there is a differential diagnosis and we'll talk about that. But before we go there, let's look at what the normal colon looks like. I like to imagine the normal colon as a series of test tubes. Here's a test tube, here's a test tube. They all run in parallel and they in theory should all reach the muscularis mucosae. When you see inflammation, which you do normally see, it should be in the upper half of the mucosa. The lower half of the mucosa is generally devoid of inflammatory cells. In general, any branching in the colon is abnormal, except for a couple of situations. One is the so-called innominate groove, where multiple crypts feed into a single lumen as shown here. Notice there is no increase in chronic inflammatory cells, so there's no reason here for you to consider a diagnosis of chronic colitis. Here's the other situation that you might see a few branched crypts that is adjacent to a lymphoid aggregate. And the lymphoid aggregates typically distort the adjacent colonic mucosa. So once you have a lymphoid aggregate, you no longer see those test tubes lined up, running in parallel and reaching the muscularis mucosa. And one final word, there is a difference between the right side of the colon and the left side of the colon. And the right side of the colon, you tend to see a lot more inflammatory cells. On the left side of the colon, particularly the rectum, you tend to see very, very few inflammatory cells. So there is a regional variation in the colon. The highest amount of inflammation in the lamina propria is on the right side, and it decreases consistently all the way to the rectum, where you see the fewest number of lymphocytes and plasma cells in the lamina propria. And I'm not even sure whether I should say this at this point, but remember, there is no entity known as nonspecific colitis. This particular image is the cecum, and in the cecum, you always see an increase in inflammatory cells. This is not nonspecific colitis. Now, to make a diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease, you've got to see abnormal architecture. When you do see abnormal colonic crypt architecture, the differential diagnosis is naturally inflammatory bowel disease, inflammatory bowel disease, and inflammatory bowel disease, at least in this country. But then you do need to consider a differential diagnosis. But before we go there, let's talk about how does one make a diagnosis of chronic colitis under the microscope. Broadly three features, crypt architecture, basal plasmacytosis, and metaplastic epithelium. Which of these three perhaps the best feature? Yes, you're right. It's basal plasma cytosis. That's the feature on which I hang my hat on. All right, this is classic chronic colitis. All right, let's start naming the features. Basal plasma cytosis, perhaps, but I'd like to see a higher power. The shortening of the crypts, the so-called crypt for shortening, that is the crypts do not reach, the muscularis mucosae. There's variation in crypt size. There's expansion of the lamina propria with a ton of lymphocytes and plasma cells. And in some cases, the most severe examples of particularly ulcerative colitis lose crypts altogether. This is also classic basal plasma cytosis. And to call something basal plasma cytosis, I like to see plasma cells on both sides of the muscularis mucosae and within the muscularis mucosae. How many features do you see here? It's of course active colitis, but there's also this expansion of the lamina propria by lymphocytes and plasma cells, and there is variation in crypt size. Perhaps the least common form of crypt architectural distortion, it's this villiform architecture. This, as I said, is extremely uncommon. Metaplastic epithelium, this is the less common form of metaplastic epithelium. This is pyloric or gastric type metaplasia, Notice this apical cup of mucin. This pyloric type metaplasia is particularly seen in the right side of the colon, extremely uncommon on the left. 
The more common metaplastic epithelium you see is Panet cell metaplasia. Now, of course, you all know that Panet cells are normal on the right and are metaplastic on the left. There is one caveat to this role, rule that you must remember. And that caveat is, I've noticed on the left side, you may occasionally see Panet cells like this one in otherwise completely normal colon. So if I see a rare Panet cell with no other evidence of colitis, I let that go and I don't make too much of it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a diagnosis of chronic colitis.